हरे कृष्णा हरे कृष्णा 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 हरे 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 राम हरे राम 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 हरे 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 कृष्णा डियर डिवोटीज प्लीज जॉइन अस टुडे इन द स्टडी ऑफ श्रीमद भागवतम टुडे विल बी स्टडी श्रीमद भागवतम कैंटो थ्री चैप्टर थर्टीन द अपियरेंस ऑफ लॉर्ड वराह हरे कृष्णा एंड हियर वी विल लर्न how to simply please the lord within the heart and this is for all living entities who are engaged in shravan kirtanam please join us for jaradha madhav prayers hare krishna
कृष्णा डियर डिवोटीज आप सबका स्वागत है आप सबका अभिनंदन है हरे कृष्णा हरे कृष्णा डियर व्यूअर्स वेलकम टू द श्रीमद भागवतम क्लास आज जीव तत्व प्रभु जी हमसे लेसन शेयर करेंगे आ, ये जो कैंटो है कैंटो थ्री चैप्टर थर्टीन एंड दिस चैप्टर इन दिस चैप्टर वी विल गेट वंडरफुल नेक्टर पास टाइम ऑफ लॉर्ड वराहा और जैसे कि हम सब जानते हैं पिछले कुछ भागवतम क्लासेस से जीव तत्व प्रभु जी हमारे से ब्रह्मा जी किस तरह से क्रिएशंस कर रहे हैं क्रिएशन कर रहे हैं और डिफरेंट पर्सनालिटीज एंड एग्जॉल्टेड डिवोटीज ऑफ द लॉर्ड के पास टाइम्स के बारे में हमें सुनने मिल रहा है जब श्री सुखदेव गोस्वामी जी परीक्षित महाराज को ये भगवत कथा सुना रहे हैं तो जीव तत्व प्रभु जी हम हमारे साथ शेयर करते हैं इन ईच भागवतम क्लास ऑल द समराइज लेसन एट द चैप्टर लेवल यानी कि एक चैप्टर में बहुत सारी वर्सेस हैं बहुत सारे डिटेल पर्पज हैं अगर आपको हाई लेवल पूरी समराइज uh, लेसन्स uh, की नॉलेज चाहिए तो ध्यान से सुनिए ये भागवतम क्लास और अपने क्वेश्चंस लाइए टुवर्ड्स द एंड अगर आप बीच में क्वेश्चंस लिखेंगे तो वो मिस हो सकते हैं तो पहले तो आप सभी का बहुत बहुत अभिनंदन है खासकर न्यू व्यूअर्स का uh, जो पहली बार आ रहे हैं इस भागवतम क्लास में और अभिषेक बोस जी हरे कृष्णा अनुगर्ग जी हरी बोल नीलू दाल जी हरे कृष्णा नीरूधर जी सौम्यदीप ठाकुर जी हरी बोल सभी व्यूअर्स जिनके नाम स्क्रॉल कर गए हैं सबका फिर से बहुत प्रणाम है अभिनंदन है रानोमल नेनवानी जी राम कुमार जी रजनी जी करुणा सिंधु प्रभु जी हरे कृष्णा कल्पना वर्मा जी हरी बोल सो so, प्लीज uh, attentively do the shravanam of the class and you will have the opportunity to ask a few questions towards the end jeeva tatva prabhu ji please go ahead hare krishna dear devotees please join us for mangala charan prayers om namo bhagavate vasudevaya om namo bhagavate vasudevaya om namo bhagavate vasudevaya भद्रेशु निगवत सेवया भगवते रुतम श्लोके भक्ति भक्ति नष्ट की हरे कृष्णा प्लीज जॉइन अस इन द रेसिटेशन ऑफ द फर्स्ट वर्स ऑफ चैप्टर 13 ऑफ थर्ड कैंटो द अपीयरेंस ऑफ लॉर्ड वराहा डियर व्यूअर्स आई विल बी शेयरिंग द लिंक टू द चैप्टर इन जस्ट अ फ्यू सेकंड्स प्रभु जी लेट मी फिक्स योर माइक्रोफोन एंड एवरीबॉडी विल हैव द वर्स सो वी विल बी शेयरिंग and on rupa devi will be sharing the link to the verse so that we can recite that together shrimad bhagavatam canto 3 chapter 13 the appearance of lord varaha text 1 shishuka vacha nishamya vacham vadato mune punyatamam nrupa भूय प्रपच्छ कौरव्यो वासुदेव कथा दृत ट्रांसलेशन बाय हिज डिवाइन ग्रेस एसी भक्ति वेदान स्वामी शिला प्रभुपाद श्री सुखदेव गोस्वामी सेट ओ किंग आफ्टर हियरिंग ऑल दीज मोस्ट वर्चुअस टॉपिक्स फ्रॉम द सेज मैत्रेय विद इन क्वाइट फर्दर ऑन द टॉपिक्स ऑफ द सुप्रीम पर्सनैलिटी ऑफ गॉड हेड विच ही अडोर्ड to hear this is a very short purport and its significance so we'll cover that purport the word adrutah is significant because it indicates that vidur had a natural inclination for hearing the transcendental message of the supreme personality of godhead and he was never fully satisfied though continuing to hear these topics those topics he wanted to hear more and more so that he could be more and more blessed by the transcendental message hare krishna 
Please join us for Guru Prarthi. Namo Om Vishnu Padaya Krishna Prishtaya Bhutale Shrimate Bhakti Vedanta Swami Nitinamine Namaste Saraswate Deve Gauravani Pracharine Nirvishesha Shunyavadi Pashatya Deshitarine Om Ajnana Timirandasya Gyananjana Shalakaya Chakshurun Militam Yena Tasma Shri Guruve Namaha Mukam karoti vachalam pangum langhayate girim yat kripata daham vande shi gurum dina tararam shi krishna chaitanya prabhu nityananda shi advaita gadadhar shi vasadi gaur bhakta vrinda hare krishna hare krishna 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 hare 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 rama hare rama 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 hare 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 krishna dear devotees so today in this chapter, you know, we earlier had been hearing how Lord Brahma is creating and that was a conversation between Maitre Muni and Viduji. So now here it is, the chapter is starting with the conversation between Shukdev Goswami and Parikshit Maharaj in the assembly of these great sages, where who are personalities, some of the personalities present, Devashi Narad, Vyasdev, Atri, Vashishta, Vishwamitra. Gautama, all these great sages, they all gathered to hear Srimad Bhagavatam. So the sages, Paramahamsas, are eager to hear Srimad Bhagavatam, just like you, all wonderful souls, are here to hear Srimad Bhagavatam. And here there was one personality, Sutta Goswami, he was also sitting. So he heard Srimad Bhagavatam, and later on he recited at Namasharanya. Srimad Bhagavatam in the assembly of many sages where Shonaka Rishi is their spokesperson. So again, and here in this chapter, the conversation we are hearing is a conversation between Maitreya Muni and Viduji. So this conversation is also very significant where Maitreya Muni is you know, discussing Lord's pastimes on the inquiry by Vidurji. So this is again a conversation. So this conversation is being mentioned by Sutta Goswami based on what he had heard from Shukdev Goswami. So again, and here is Lord Krishna and Uddhav where Maitre Muni heard the message from Lord Shri Krishna himself. So again, all these wonderful pastimes are being covered. And today we are covering the appearance of Lord Varaha, where we can easily understand how to please the Supreme Lord, Lord Shri Krishna, within the heart, who is appearing in our heart, and the heart of every living entity as Paramatma, as Super Soul. And it is very important because, you know, that way we will also be satisfied. So again, we will be covering this particular aspect. How can we all be pleased? Now, in this chapter, there is a peace formula also given. There is also given what is proper renunciation. Also, it is given how we should look at this secondary creation by Lord Brahma. And who is the cause of everything? Right? Sometimes people say, oh, Lord Brahma is Parampita. Yes, because he is doing the creation. But beyond him, his creation is, you know, coming from the navel of Garbha Dakshai Vishnu. So again, Lord Krishna is the cause of all causes. So we should keep that focus as well. Because everything should be dovetailed in Lord Krishna's service. To please Lord Shri Krishna, then everyone else would be satisfied. So here, now Shukdev Goswami, he, he is glorifying and he refers to Nurpa, which is Parikshit Maharaj, which is direct reference to Parikshit Maharaj. He was the emperor of the world and he gave up the whole kingdom after he heard that he has been cursed to die in seven days. You know, this was Shringi, the son, Brahman son of Shamikrishi, who had cursed him that he would die in seven days from the bite of a 
स्नेक तो एक स्नेक के डसने से उनकी मृत्यु हो जाएगी सात दिनों में सो so, सात दिनों में वट इज़ द सोल्यूशन यू नो इट इज़ वेरी इंटरेस्टिंग दैट परीक्षित महाराज यू नो ही इज ऑलरेडी इज कॉल्ड विष्णु रात विच मीन्स के अ पर्सन जिसको भगवान विष्णु खुद प्रोटेक्ट करते हैं और भगवान कृष्ण ने उनको उनकी मदर के वोम में जाके प्रोटेक्ट किया था जब ब्रह्मास्त्र शूट किया था किसने अश्वत्थामा सन ऑफ द्रोणाचार्य ने टू डिस्ट्रॉय द लास्ट यू नो डिसेंडेंट इन द पांडवर्स रेन सो अगेन अभिमन्यु और उत्तरा के बेटे थे परीक्षित महाराज ही वॉज इन द वोम और उस समय उनको भगवान ने प्रोटेक्ट किया था दैट्स वाई ही वॉज ऑल्सो कॉल विष्णु रात और परीक्षित का मतलब है एग्जामिनर ही वॉज ऑलवेज एग्जामिनिंग Every personality from the personality he saw जब उन्होंने अपनी माँ के यू नो वूम में देखा गर्भ में देखा लॉर्ड के शक तो हर किसी को जिससे भी मिलते थे उसको एग्जामिन करते थे इज दिस द पर्सनैलिटी दैट आई सॉ इन द माई मदर्स वूम और इज दिस द पर्सनैलिटी आई सॉ इन माई सो ही वॉज एन एग्जामिनर सो वी लर्न फ्राम हिम हाउ वी शुड बी एग्जामिंग थिंग्स एंड द बेस्ट वे ऑफ एग्जामिनिंग थिंग्स Sometimes people say eyes, right? But here, Shruti, because he is also examining by hearing from the shastras, by hearing from the spiritual masters, by hearing from the brahmanas, how to perfect your life. So, अगर किसी को पता लगता है कि उसके पास सात दिन बचे हैं आज के जमाने में, a person who is so much in sense gratification, they go on a shopping spree. or they sh- go on a you know sensual enjoyment traveling around the world and all those activities that we see but the true purpose of life is to please lord shri krishna and to be engaged properly situated properly in devotional service in serving lord shri krishna and in serving lord shri krishna in the devo- engagement in devotional service simply starts with the chanting of the holy name हरे कृष्णा हरे कृष्णा 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 हरे 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 रामा हरे रामा राम रामा हरे हरे एंड स्टार्टिंग फ्रॉम द हियरिंग इन दिस वर्स आल्सो इट इज सेड दैट विदु जी सो सुखदेव गोस्वामी इज टेलिंग परीक्षित महाराज दैट माय डियर किंग विदु जी वाज हियरिंग फॉर मैत्रिमुनि एंड ही वाज वेरी एंशियस टू हियर मोर ही वुड नेवर बी सेटिस्फाइड यू नो when the glories of lord krishna are being recited so again he wanted to hear more so this is to encourage the king and actually appreciate the king who was so attentively hearing from shukdev goswami this beautiful conversation that is occurring between viduji and maitreya muni and viduji's curiosity to hear about the creation to hear about the various manus to hear about their descendants and to hear the various past times of the supreme personality of god had lord shri krishna as how he advanced in this material world time and again right so we hear in bhagavad gita lord krishna is explaining to arjun the three reasons of his you know uh, descending to this material world to this material universe what are those paritranaay sadhunam vinashaya cha duskritam dharma sansthapana thaya sambhavami yuge yuge lord krishna is revealing to arjun that to protect the devotees more like to bless the devotees to have the loving exchange with the devotees that is paritranaay sadhunam vinashaya cha duskritam to annihilate the discreants to subdue the demonic propensities and to you know stop the irreligious activities so the, again and then dharma sansthapana tha to establish the principles of religion not just the rituals of religion because rituals are practice above practice comes principles and when you do practice you need processes and tools and all the other paraphernalia that goes with it but ab- above the practices is the are the principles to establish the principles and those principles um, you know blesses one with the proper mindset because samadhi comes from samadhan right and samadhan is what is the solution and this solution is to engage our mind in lost devotional service man mana so lot when lord krishna is giving this instruction that man mana bhav mad bhakto madhyaji mam namaskuru 
Mame Vaishyati Satyam Te Pratijane Priyasine. So again, he is telling Arjun that how to engage in devotional service, always think of me, right? And become my devotee, Manmanabhav Madbhakto, become my devotee, Madhyaji, worship me, Maam Namaskuru, pay obeisances unto me. So by following this process, he is saying that you will surely achieve me. And when people find it difficult because they have so many other responsibilities, then Lord Krishna is saying, Sarva dharmam paritya jamam ekam sharanam raja aham tuam sarva pape bhyo moksha shyami maasha chaha. So again, sarva dharmam paritya ja. So, you know, give up all varieties of religion. And there are so many varieties of religion we see, not just that, you know, Hindu, Muslim and all, but even beyond that, people, they have various kind of uh, traditions that they have, you know, they would focus so much on specific uh, events in their life. You know, people who are attracted to sports, they are, you know, going and following different kind of celebrities in the sports area. People who are interested in speeches, they hear various kind of TEDx audience, you know, they participate as an audience to hear those. People who are interested in scholarly studies in various branches of science, they focus on those scientists and what is the news in that particular area and so forth. And especially in pandemic time, everyone wants to know about the vaccines that are coming out and how they could, may have some reactions and all those aspects, right? Yet at the same time, devotees, we are above the bodily concept of life. So we want to hear about the absolute truth, not of the relative world where things change, right? Today this person is high, okay, this person has been defeated by this person. It's all relativity in this material world. But in absolute truth, when we are focusing the Supreme Personality of Godhead, Lord Shri Krishna, then we are getting purified. We are experiencing the peace and by engaging in devotional service, bhajate maam. So again, when we engage in the worship, in the uh, devotional service of Lord Shri Krishna, bhaj is much beyond the worship aspect. So we should understand, we become <laughs> happy within our, our hearts and Lord is pleased with us. And so that we attain the purpose of life because all these personalities in the relative world do not know the purpose of life. It is very important question that we should all be asking. Atato Brahma Jigyasa. What is the purpose? Means, why am I here? Why is there so much suffering in this material world? Why are bad things happening to good people? Why is there so much anxiety? Why is there death? You know, because even that is relativity. Why is there forgetfulness of our consciousness, of our true position? That is also relativity. Again, so here, devotees, they understand that the purpose of life is to go back home, back to God, and to always engage in Lord Krishna's service. Right? We discussed that yesterday as well. That Mama Janmane Janmane Ishware Bhagavatad Bhaktir Ahetu Kitwai. Chaitanya Mahaprabhu is praying. It doesn't matter if I get births after births in this material world, but I want to engage in your devotional service in the association of devotees, and that is paramount. And that's why we hear about the various conversations, various, you know, transcendental gl glories of the Supreme Personality of Godhead, His name, form, activities, and pastimes. So hearing and chanting are paramount, and Nityam Bhagavata Sevaya. It is not that we just do Bhagavata Saptaha. Srila Prabhupada said that's, you know, another creation of the humans. While every day we should be hearing, we should be chanting, we should be reading and, you know, about Srimad Bhagavatam. The, because Srimad Bhagavatam, what is the subject matter of Srimad Bhagavatam? Subject matter of Srimad Bhagavatam is the absolute truth, Right? And sometimes people say, well, what is the difference between Bhagavad Gita and Srimad Bhagavatam? If you know the answer, please write in the comments. What is the difference between Bhagavad Gita and Srimad Bhagavatam? Bhagavad Gita means song of God, right? So, 
it is not different from Lord Shri Krishna because name form activities past times of Lord Shri Krishna they are all on the absolute platform non different so bhagavad gita in bhagavad gita we hear what we should do you know what is the reason we have appeared in this material world what is the significance of human form of life what is the goal of life and what are our activities that will please the lord so that we will get his causeless mercy what kind of endeavors we should engage in what kind of relationships we should be developing what are the various processes of devotional service so again we should be looking at those and so in bhagavad gita we hear about the nine processes of course in shrimad bhagavatam they are elaborated so in shrimad bhagavatam they are explained how we should do it so we hear about the activities of the supreme personality of god at lord shikesha and we also hear about the glories of the acti- and the activities of his pure devotees who are explaining by their example acharya means one who teaches by example acharya comes from acharan right behavior so a behavior of a person shows us how, who they are and it is not the you know from the external perspective a person may be rich that does not matter because absolute platform is above richness again rich and poor their relativity a person may be beautiful again that is a relative aspect of this material world but on the absolute platform the beauty of lord krishna is paramount tandarupa koti kamaniya vishesha shobha so lord's beauty is more than hundreds of thousands of crores actually hundreds of hundreds of lakhs so koti crores of tandarupa cupid you know crores times more beautiful than a cupid so because he is at the absolute platform so we should look at it everything you know from the perspective of glorification of lord shri krishna somebody someone may be very intelligent right so we talked about beauty we talked about richness we talked about intelligent but who is the most intelligent again in the relative world a person may be intelligent today and tomorrow someone will come and refute his theory we talked about this scenario where you know it was uh basically you know a personality and a scientist was standing in front of uh newton's statue so this is and he was saying that i'm going to uh, you know surpass i'm going to prove your theory wrong and who was this personality it was einstein so again and he proved that uh, newton basically said light travels in straight line einstein said well light bends and he used the example of solar eclipse where he showed that the stars their position expanded and contracted during the solar eclipse which shows that the light bends so again there is always this relativity aspects there and we all understand that during reflection light does bend right it's a direct action so we can also see that the, by manipulation in this relative world things can be changed but what is the most important we should be changing most important we should be changing is our mind we should be purifying our mind cheto darpana marjanam we should be changing our heart our consciousness by spontaneously engaging in devotional service we want to come to that spontaneous level so first we are practicing as practitioners sadhaka sadhaka sadhana karte hain right so a practitioner practices a process and by following various practices in with, with the tools and processes we come to the level of following the principles under the guidance of a bona fide spiritual master now that is very important to accept a bona fide spiritual master so here we heard in the previous chapter how lord brahma is started the creation and how initially he was not very happy because he was creating things which he felt was sinful you know the fear of death he was creating that he didn't like that you know the forgetfulness of one's own identity to become conditioned and think i'm this body when he created these things of course these things are the cause that we forget ourselves but it was created and lord brahma did not like he considered them sinful activities 
And that is why so many, you know, human beings, so many living entities are bewildered in their various, you know, uh, forms, the material forms. So again, this is the influence of those creations that a living entity in the body of a dog behaves like a dog, in the body of a cat behaves like a cat, in the body of a woman behaves like a woman, in the body of a man behaves like a man. <coughs> and sometimes the conditioning becomes so gross that you know the living entity in the a body of an American behaves like an American and the body of an Indian behaves like. So this is conditioning. But human form of life is rare because we have intelligence. We can analyze things. We can logically separate relativity from absolute truth. And so the learned transcendentalist, they have understood that the absolute truth can be recognized in three forms. What are the three forms? Brahman, Paramatma and Bhagwan. Brahman effulgence. Just like sun, from the sun globe comes sunshine. So if the sunshine falls on our body, we can understand the presence of sun. And the sun is being represented as Paramatma, as a super soul in our heart. And on the sun is the sun god. So again, similarly, you know, the reason of Paramatma, who is expanding as Paramatma in our heart? Lord Shri Krishna, he is Bhagwan, right? Parabrahman. So he is Param pa, Brahma Param Dhamma Pavitram Paramam Bhavam, as Arjun is praying, that he is, you know, beyond Brahman, he is the cause of Brahman. And he is the cause of the super soul who is residing in our heart. So Lord expands in so many forms. And so again, sometimes people ask, what is the reference where these three forms of absolute truth is identified? So in the first canto, first chapter, tenth verse, is where the sages at Namasharya are revealing this, because they are learned transcendentalists. So they are revealing this to Sutta Goswami. Vadanti tato vidas tatvam yajjnanam avyayam brahmeti paramatmeti bhagwaniti shabdyate. So learned transcendentalists recognize absolute truth in three forms. Brahman, the Brahman effulgence, Paramatma, the super soul Paramatma in our heart, and Bhagwan, Lord Shri Krishna, the Supreme Personality of Godhead, who is always transcendental to the three modes of material nature, and he is the Lord of the material nature. So again, we should understand from that perspective. So when Lord Brahma was creating, he you know, again went in meditation, and then he further started creating, but this time, he had an incident, so he gave up his body. And, you know, so in this particular second instance, he had actually created four sons uh, who are the Chatur Kumaras. And because of the anger that he had, you know, when they refused him, he became angry. Sometimes when the sons don't agree to what father is saying, asking them, then fathers have the tendency to become angry. So again, we see this tendency in Brahma. So he becomes, you know, mortified. He becomes really, really angry. Not just angry, he, he feels very bad about this. So at that time, because he could not, he tried not to show on his face. But since that was, so the eyebrows, they come together in anger. So with that, you know, Rudra, he came into being. So these sons were not, you know, the Chatur Kumar, Sanak, Sanatan, Sanandana and Sanat Kumar refused to, Increase the progeny, right? Increase the population in this material world. So that's why he was angry. So now Rudra appeared and he asked him to increase the progeny. And Rudra followed what he said. But that was more fearful. So previously he was only angry. Now he is fearful because Rudra was producing unlimited sons and grandsons who were just like him. You know, engaged in the activities in the mode of ignorance. So again, the activities were you know belonging to the mode of ignorance like destruction anger and he said that to stop this because these your sons grandsons they're destroying the whole universe they are about to devour the whole universe so please go in meditation and at that time rudra simply uh, circumambulated lord brahma who he considers his, his father and he went to the forest now Lord Brahma, he started continuing the creation, the incident happens. 
where Marichi and others pray for him to, you know, engage in his duties properly because everyone follows his example. So at that time, Lord Brahma, he gave up his body which became the dangerous fog in darkness. And the fog that we see sometimes in winter season that comes can be simply dissipated when the sunlight is there, right? So with the sunlight, it can be dissipated. So we can see things properly in the presence of sun, just like we can understand everything that's happening in our life properly under the shelter of the Supreme Personality of Godhead. Jab hum Bhagwan ki glory sunte hain, jab hum Bhagwan ka gurugan karte hain, humme apne sa jivan mein jo bhi parikriya ho rahi hain, all the activities, all the incidents, jo bhi events ho rahe hain, unko hum samaj sakte hain and we can see the blessings of the Lord in all the bad things. Now sometimes people say, how can you see the blessings of the Lord in all that is happening around you? So there's a beautiful story, a short story. Once there was this man, he went to his spiritual master and said, my dear spiritual master, bahut buri baat ho gai, ye bahut dukh ki baat hai. So spiritual master says, maybe good, maybe bad, what is it? So he says, ke actually I only had one bull and the bull died. So I am a farmer, I am a kisan, and when my bell died, I will not be able to do it. So, you know, his spiritual master says, maybe it is good, maybe it is bad. So he's confused. He leaves, but he's like, why didn't my spiritual master say, it's, maybe it's good, maybe it's bad. Anyway, then he comes the next day. He says, my dear spiritual master, it's a very good thing. So they say, what happened, maybe it's good, maybe it's bad, what is it? So he says, my son, he went to the forest and he was able to capture a horse who is 10 times more powerful than this bull. So now I can easily carry out my farming activities. So the, what did the spiritual master say? Maybe it's good, maybe it's bad. He's again confused. When he leaves, he says, he's thinking, my spiritual master really doesn't know what he's talking about. Anyway, the next day he comes back and he says, my dear spiritual master, very bad thing has happened. So the spiritual master says, what happened? So he says, actually my son was riding the horse, he fell down and he broke his arm. He broke his hand. So he had to plaster his hand. So the spiritual master says, maybe it's good, maybe it's bad. Now this person is thinking, Kisan is thinking, my spiritual master, he says this, he doesn't know what he's talking about. Then what happens is, the neighboring kingdom attacks. So the king sends out, you know, his army generals all over in all the cities, villages to collect all the young, you know, youth, uh, full men. So again, to join the army so that they can fight against this uh, an attacking army with this attacking, you know, with the neighboring army. So at that time, you know, he's, this person comes back to the spiritual master and says something very good happened. So the spiritual master says, what happened? He said, when these generals came, they saw my son had his arm broken, so they didn't select him. So he doesn't have, he was not drafted to fight in the war. The spiritual master says, maybe it is good, maybe it is bad. And it is at this time, he understands that he is looking at everything in relativity, right? Sometimes people become upset. We have to rise above this relativity because relativity belongs in the modes of material nature. Is jagat ka characteristic hai. So here, you know, we want to rise above and how can we rise above when this here, the glories of Lord's name, form, activity is pastime. So as I when Lord Brahma, you know, when he was contemplating at that time, two personalities came. These were Swayambhuva Manu and Shatrupa. And so they joined as husband and wife and Manu in this chapter asks, Lord Brahma for instructions. So when a son asks the father for instructions, father is very happy, right? It is not that the previous unhappiness was bad with the Chatur Kumaras because Chatur Kumaras rejected him for a higher purpose. So yes, a son can reject the instruction of his father for a higher purpose, not for a lower purpose. That would be a bad son, a Kaput, not a Saput. So here Manu is also glorified by Lord Brahma, he is called by Lord Brahma as the father of the mankind. So Manushya, Manav, that we come. So we receive the name as descendants of Manu because he is the one 
who is the administrator of the universe. So again, in this chapter, Swayambhuva Manu's reference is given as well as Chakshusha Manu. So Varadev's appearance has been dis- at has, as it has been described in this chapter, just thus has been described kya gaya hai, is referring the incidents that happened between, uh, in the reign of Swayambhuva Manu or Swayambhuva Manu ke baad mein Chakshusha Manu aay, right? So Chakshusha Manu ke reign mein bhi Varadev ka appearance hua. So the incidents refer to both of those incidents. और इस इसमें जब ये स्वयंभुव मनु पूछ रहे हैं कि प्लीज गिव मी इंस्ट्रक्शन सो एट दैट टाइम ब्रह्मा जी खुश होते हैं उनको ग्लोरीफाई करते हैं और बोलते हैं कि यू शुड इंक्रीज द प्रोजेनी एंड प्रोड्यूस सन्स जस्ट लाइक यू वाइल द प्रीवियस इंस्ट्रक्शन टू लॉर्ड रुद्रवस डोंट प्रोड्यूस सन जस्ट लाइक यू बिकॉज दे आर अबाउट टू डिवॉर द यूनिवर्स सो यस दे कैन बी डिफरेंट इंस्ट्रक्शन टू डिफरेंट disciples as we see in case of shila prabhupad so there was uh, you know one sanyasi walked in and he said my dear shila prabhupad please instruct me what should i do so shila prabhupad said you should leave immediately and you should be wandering all around the world preaching krishna consciousness don't stay at any place more than you know 3 4 days so he took that instruction to his heart and he left right and the second one when another sanyasi walked in and he said shila prabhupad what should i do please give me instruction so shila prabhupad said you should stay here and manage be the gbc of this area manage be the president of this temple and manage the affairs of this temple and you know that sanyasi understood the message as is there were in other instances so this devotees who were sitting they were surprised to completely different instructions to two different disciples have been given why because shila prabhupada special master wants to see what is favorable for each of them and everyone around them to be in krishna consciousness to make the spiritual growth to be able to progress in their spiritual journey so as me just like here we are seeing the example where to rudra brahma ji said don't produce children like you go for meditation you know while here He is asking Swambhu Amanu to pr- produce children just like him, so that they become very obedient and they further increase the progeny. And that would be nice progeny. Where in this material world, the living entities with good progeny will be able to get an opportunity to be able to go back home, back to Godhead. So that is the purpose why we all have taken birth, so that in the human form of life, which is very rare, we can go back home. and swambhu manu is you know brilliant because he is saying we will execute your instructions based on our capabilities so again in devotional service also we don't engage in over and work rather we engage with love right we engage with devotion we engage with gratitude because when the endeavor word comes in it becomes like a labor right it doesn't really sound good but devotional service is a reflection of our love it's a reflection of our gratitude for lord shri krishna who is so merciful he is so affectionate to us who is you know constantly ready to bestow mercy on his devotees and so we get to serve lord shri krishna by following the dharma the yug dharma is the congregation chanting hare krishna hare krishna 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 hare hare हरे रामा हरे रामा राम रामा हरे हरे वे वी आर प्रेइंग माय डियर लॉर्ड प्लीज एंगेज मी इन योर सर्विस माय डियर राधा रानी माय मदर लॉर्ड राम लॉर्ड कृष्णा प्लीज एंगेज मी इन योर सर्विस बिकॉज वी आर सफरिंग इन दिस मटेरियल वर्ल्ड बाय एंगेजमेंट इन डिवोशन सर्विस वी ट्रांसेंड द थ्री मोड्स ऑफ मटेरियल नेचर द मोड ऑफ गुडनेस सत्व गुणा मोड ऑफ पैशन रज गुणा मोड ऑफ इग्नोरेंस तमो गुणा सो वी वॉन्ट टू एंगेज so love is higher and in love there is no endeavor because it is spontaneous we want to come to that platform of prema where everything is spontaneous because when we are doing it we are getting jubilant we are feeling transcendental bliss there is no point to feel tiredness there is not even a point of saying an endeavor yes from the external perspective people are saying forget about over endeavor these devotees they cross all boundaries right 
there was a very nice incident where in Calcutta, you know, one of the person, he was being preached. So he said, these devotees, it is not possible that they don't drink, right? They are always intoxicated. Why? Because he went to the, you know, the temple at Mayapur and he saw the devotees dancing and his comment was, it is not possible for a human being to dance for hours and hours with so much energy, with so much enthusiasm, unless, you know, he is highly drugged, he is highly intoxicated. Yes, we are intoxicated by the love of Godhead. That is the mood of a devotee. So there is no point of endeavor. Rather, it is a reflection of love. And that's why Acharyas reveal that in this material world, we see all kind of relativity. But in the spiritual world, the transcendental bliss flows over just like an overflowing ocean. So, here we understand the significance of Lord Brahma's instruction. And he is referring to Manu as the father of mankind. And Manu is the administrator. So in current times, you know, the Manu is Vavasvata Manu, the son of Lord Vivaswan, the sun god. So again, different Manus. In a, one day of Lord Brahma, there are 14 Manus. They reign. So again, they are the administrators. So the administrator duration has been identified. Not, that is not the lifetime of a Manu. So sometimes people, they confuse between these aspects. So... His instructions, Lord Brahma's instruction is that you should grow in pursuance of devotional service and worship of the Supreme Personality of Godhead. So he's not just saying that do these activities, do these activities in relationship with your devotional service. Anasakta Sya Vishyam Yatharamapuyanjata Nirbandha Krishna Sambandhe Yukta Vairagya Muchyate so anasakta vishyam, you know, not being, so we should be focusing, you know, everything in relationship with Lord Shri Krishna. So all activities should be dovetailed to please Lord Shri Krishna and that is called yukta vairagya, proper renunciation. However, if one re neglects relationship of everything around them with respect to Lord Shri Krishna, that everything is related with Lord Shri Krishna, and does not perform one's duties, prescribed duties, constitutional duties, then that is called Phalgu Vairagya, that is called false renunciation. So this is where also in the purpose, Srila Prabhupada explains that how Mayavadis and the Gyan Yogis, they neglect to do their duties, right? And so they actually fall down from their position. The possibility of returning back home becomes very difficult. And after many, many births, when a jnani properly, without such offenses, engage in worshipping the Lordship, then he is able to become a bhakta. So, jnana yoga and karma yoga, they depend on bhakti yoga, but bhakti yoga does not depend on any other processes. That is also very important. Bahu nam janma namam te jnana maam prapadyate. Lord Krishna tells Arjun, that after many, many births, a jnana, you know, a jnana yogi, jnana one, with proper knowledge, takes to my shelter, which means he engages in bhakti yoga. So again, that is also very important. In this chapter, in the 13th verse, it is very clearly identified that when one is, <coughs> excuse me, That when one is looking for their ultimate benefit, then they engage in devotional service of the Lord and they become free of all anxieties. They attain peace because Lord Krishna is the, you know, He is, all sacrifices are done to please Him. So He is the beneficiary of all sacrifices. And this is the same as 5.29, the first part of the 5.29 verse in Bhagavad Gita. <coughs> Excuse me. Bhuktaram yagatapasam sarva lok maheshwaram surhidam sarva bhutanam gyatvamam shantim richati bhuktaram yagatapasam. Lord Krishna is saying that he is the beneficiary of all sacrifices. Right? Sarva lok maheshwaram. And he is the supreme proprietor of all 
universes, spiritual as well as material universes. Suruhidam Sarva Bhutanam, he is the well wish of all living entities, not just humans, but also animals, birds, aquatics, plants, trees, mountains, hills, they are also living entities, as we'll be hearing. So again, so we should always be looking at from that perspective that all our activities are meant to please Lord Shri Krishna. So we should be carrying out our activities as Lord Krishna decides. Anukulena Krishna Anushilena Bhakti you know, bhakti uttama. So, what is uttam bhakti? When everything that we perform is dovetailed to please Lord Shri Krishna. So, Manu is the administrator of this universe. So, current times it is Vavaswata Manu. We are hearing about the past times where Swambhuva Manu is interacting and asking for instructions from Lord Brahma. And he is a Kshatriya because administrators they protect. So, for the protection of human society, Manu wrote Manu Samhita and there is one particular aspect of Manu Samhita that people like to refer a lot. In the current times, however, it does not apply and we will quickly cover that. So people say that yes, in Manu Samhita it is said that if one has committed a murder, he has killed another living entity, then he should be killed immediately so that he does not engage in those you know, further sinful activities and the sinful reactions over a period of time, they multiply. The interest rate of Maya Devi is much higher than any of the credit cards you have known. So again, it multiplies many times, so the human being or the living entity will have to suffer for having killed. So this applies to human beings, not to other living entities. So, sometimes you, people use this to say we should uh, support capital punishment. However, there have been too many examples in the history where it has been proven that the wrong person has been given capital punishment because our you know, judiciary system is very faulty in current times. It does not rely, we don't have proper knowledgeable people out there and they can be manipulated with power, with influence, with you know, wealth and so many other luring propensities in this material world. So again, that's why capital punishment should not be carried out. It has been very nicely explained by the Acharyas. And at that time, Manu, he is asking Swambhuva Manu, you know, after getting the instruction, he said, my dear father, can you please take this earth down from the, you know, it's submerged in the ocean, in the waters, it has fallen in the waters. So at that time, he is saying that, please, can you, by your endeavor and by the mercy of the Lord, because you can do this by your endeavor and by the mercy of the Lord. Now this is where those two fingers, short scenario, we are reminded of. Where Yashoda Mai was trying to buy Lord Krishna with a rope, right? That's why we get, you know, we hear that Lord is also called Damodar. Dam means rope, Udar is stomach. So he was bound by the rope, by the love of Mother Yashoda. When he, she was initially trying to bind him, it was always falling short by two fingers, distance of two fingers. And she was getting more and more rope, many meter long ropes. And she was tying that rope and further coming around and it was always falling short by two fingers. And she was perspiring, she was feeling tired, she was breathing heavily and she was smiling at the same time, wondering that this is so wondrous that I can put my arms around my Lalla, but I cannot put a rope around because Lord Krishna is Ananta. He is unlimited. How can you bind one who is unlimited with something that is limited? So it was always falling short by two fingers. And at that time, Mother Yashoda, seeing her so tired, so exhausted, Lord Krishna, he invoked his causeless mercy. And so he was, she was able to bind him. You know, and we sing this about this pastime as Davoda Leela. So again, these two fingers, what do they represent? Our endeavor and Lord's causeless mercy. So when Lord Brahma heard this request from Swambhuva Manu, he was contemplating as how to do that. And he was meditating on the Supreme Personality of Godhead that only Supreme Personality of Godhead can maintain. Because Lord Brahma is responsible for creation. So when it comes to maintenance, 
it is a much tougher task, task than creation. So, at that time, as he was contemplating, from his nostril came up a form which was like a varaha, right? Shukara. So again, that is a boar, a wild boar. And so it sort of started increasing in its size and became as big as a mountain and was roaring up in the sky. So at that time, the word has been used in one of the verses is Maya Maya, right? So this verse refers to the aspect that, you know, it has three meanings. Maya Maya means mercy of the Lord. It also means specific knowledge and also means illusion. So we normally talk about Maya with respect to illusion because in the material world, we are in illusion by Maha Maya so that we forget that we are eternal living entities and we think that we are this body while we are the spirit soul. So we, this forgetfulness is illusion. In the spiritual world, Yoga Maya makes the devotees forget, you know, especially in Vrindavan, Golok Vrindavan, that Lord Krishna is the Supreme Personality of Godhead. So Nan Baba thinks that this is my dear son, Krishna. Mother Yashoda thinks, you know, with Vasya Bhava. And all the gopis, they think of Lord Krishna as their lover. So again, because yoga of yoga maya's influence so that is so that lord krishna can fully enjoy so everything in the spiritual world is arranged so that lord krishna can enjoy and all the devotees enjoy by serving lord krishna in material world the illusion is so that we think that we are this body and we seek sense enjoyment and that is delusion because that causes suffering so as he grew to such a huge size right this is lord varahadev he appeared as a boar varaha means boar right a wild boar so he has these tusks showing up you know and he's gaining the size of a mountain and everyone is wondering so lord brahma is wondering who is this personality am i the cause of his being how has this come? It is so wonderful that he appeared from my nostril and you know, when they saw him, it was just like the upper part of the thumb. But now he has grown, you know, he has increased his size like that of a great mountain. So much so that his size was increasing that he was covering the three lokas, so his externally. And even though it is said that the earth had fallen in the ocean, right, and the reference is given of Rasatal. Srila Vishwanath Chakoti Thakur explains that actually Rasatal, Dattal, Sutala, Patal, all these planets are in the earth does not belong in this region. Earth is the middle region, the middle region. But because of the influence that we have discussed in the past, by having lost its balance, and who's the demon responsible? Hiranaksha. Hirana means gold, Aksha means eye. So he had eye for gold. He was always looking to extract gold. And he realized that earth has a lot of gold. So he extracts, extracted so much gold from earth that it lost its balance and fell out of its orbit. From its orbit of circumambulating around the, revolving around the sun, it fell. And the lower half of this material universe is waters, right? Garbhuda Ocean. So it fell in the Garbhuda Ocean and fell further into the region where it is very difficult to go. So Lord Varahadev immediately, he jumped into the Garbhuda Koshyam. And as, just like a mountain falls, splitting the uh, ocean into two halves. So there was two halves, waves appeared as if the ocean was crying, Garbhuda Koshyam was crying, that my dear Lord, please don't split me into two, showing that it is experiencing as if its imminent death is near of an ocean. So yes, ocean is also reflected with that because that is where all the living entities they are also resting so and you know Garbhodakshai Vishnu he is also resting there so again as the ocean is splitting he is going and penetrating in and as if like you know a boar a wild animal would try to sense something by smell that you know so as if by following the smell of the earth it goes picks up the earth from the area so again a boar can go to very dirty places as well so it was able to go to that very end, even though there is no end to Garbhada Koshyam, as is explained by Matrimony saying, still Varahadevi went to the very end 
to the bottom of Garbuda Kosha and lifted the earth on his tusk and brought it out. And he rode very nicely earlier also and now again. And at that time, there was a demon, Hiranaksh, who tried to stop him. So he, they fought and Lord killed him very easily. So in the 13th century, Jaydev Goswami appeared and he sang some amazing prayers, the Shavtar Stotra. So again, those prayers where he's glorifying 10 choices. He chose 10 of the unlimited incarnations of the Lord and he's singing. So there he is giving this reference. Vasati dashana shikare dharani tavalagna Shashini kalanka kalevani magna Keshavadhita shukar rupa Jaya Jagadish Hare Jaya Jagadish Hare Jaya Jagadish Hare So this has been translated by Srila Prabhupada. All glories to Lord Keshava, Lord Krishna, who appeared as the bowl. The earth was held between his tusks which appeared like the scars on the moon. And Matthew Muni is also glorifying this scene where when Lord Varahadev, he brought back earth, you know, from the bottom of the Skarbodak ocean, it appeared like an elephant has in, in his tusk is carrying, what is he carrying? A lotus flower. So that way when an elephant is carrying the lotus flower, the lotus flower makes the elephant look very nice, very beautiful. And because the elephant is carrying the lotus flower and waving it, the lotus flower also looks very nice. So again, both of them. So similarly, when Lord Varahadev was carrying Mother Earth on his tusks, they both look very beautiful. And all the residents, Lord Brahma, the you know residents of Janaloka, the Brahmanas, the Prithaloka, and the residents of uh, Tapaloka. So all these, Janalok, Tapalok and Satyalok, Satyalok is also known as Brahmalok, Lord Brahma resides there. They were singing prayers when they saw Lord Varahadev, you know, when he initially appeared. And Lord Varahadev rode initially before jumping into the waters of Garbhuda Koshin to, you know, acknowledge and accept their prayers. And they were singing prayers from the Vedas. And they were singing about the magnanimity of Lord Shri Krishna, his munificent. So here we are saying, you know, and the reference of, uh, you know, bringing the earth back and their prayer where they are saying that the earth is your wife. That is referring to Chakshusha Manu's reign. So those prayers, so the prayers have been referred, the prayers they sang during Swambhuva Manu's times and the prayers they sang during Chakshusha Manu have been combined. Many, some of these prayers have been combined in this chapter. And at that time, we also understand that earth, she gave birth to a son. So that son was also referred to as Bhambasur or Narkasur, so who was killed by Lord Shri Krishna and Satya Bhama. Why do we say Lord Krishna and Satya Bhama? We will refer to it. We have referred to it in the previous uh, lessons when we covered those past times. So we will refer to it again in the 10th canto. So here, Lord Krishna, he is establishing and everyone understands. So, Brahman Naradiya Puran's reference comes where the Mahamantra has been identified. And yes, sometimes people say, wait, wait a minute. There, Hare Ram, Hare Ram, Ram Ram, Hare Hare comes before Hare Krishna, Hare Krishna, Krishna Krishna, Hare Hare. So again, but when Chaitanya Mahaprabhu appeared, he identified, you know, that we should be singing Hare Krishna, Hare Krishna, Krishna Krishna, Hare Hare, Hare Ram, Hare Ram, Ram Ram, Hare Hare. So sometimes people are saying, wait a minute, this, this is not right. So again, they are in relativity. We should not fall down to relativity. Remember the incident where Devashi Nara realizing that Ratnakar, the hunter, could not chant Ram. He told him to chant what? Mara. So he chanted Mara, 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 Mara. 
So again, don't fall into relativity because Lord's name is above relativity. It's absolute truth. Abhinatvam nam namino. And the person named and the name itself, they are non different. So focus on the chanting as per the Acharyas, as per Chaitanya Mahaprabhu's instruction and simply chant. Hare Krishna, Hare Krishna, Krishna Krishna, Hare Hare, Hare Rama, Hare Rama, Rama Rama, Rama Hare Hare. So this has been also identified and so we should engage in the chanting of the holy name so that we are asking, we are praying that my dear Lord, please engage me in your devotional service. And of the devotional service processes, two are paramount, hearing and chanting Shavanam and Kirtanam. And sometimes people say, wait a minute, but we are yogis. Then we should also understand who is the topmost yogi. In Bhagavad Gita 6.47, Lord Krishna is revealing this. Yogi naam api sarvesham madgate nantar atmanaha shraddhavan bhajate yo maam same yukta tamo mataha. So again, who is the topmost yogi? One who is engaged in devotional service. Bhaja. Bhaja is much greater than worship. Worship is just one of the process. Bhaja refers to devotional service. And even, you know, Shankracharya, he gave this. Even though he was, you know, talking about Mayavad philosophy, he is none other than incarnation of Lord Shiva and he is preaching this. Bhaja Govindam, Bhaja Govindam, Govindam, Bhaja Mulamate. So what is the topmost goal? That we should engage in devotional service. Even from all directions, from the Acharyas, we are getting this instruction. So we should engage in devotional service, especially Shamanam, hearing, about the glorious name form activities, pastimes of Lord Shri Krishna and chanting Hare Krishna Maha Mantra and the glories. So here we are understanding. So by, when we engage in all activities to please Lord Krishna as he wants, that is proper Vairagya, right? And Lord Krishna himself says in Bhagavad Gita how one can get his blessings. Tesham satati yukta nam bhajatam priti purvakam dadabi bhukti yogabtam yedam amupi te. So, for one who constantly engages in the devotional service of the Lord with faith, so we should engage with faith, with love, with devotion, with gratitude, that Lord certainly gives the intelligence to achieve Him at the ultimate end. So, again, we are seeking that blessing, the causeless mercy of the Lord, of the Lordship, so that we can go back home. We can constantly be in transcendental bliss and don't have to worry about the miseries of this material world. So again, here in the prayers, Mother Earth is glorified and praised, and Lord Varahadev is praised by the residents of Satyalok, Tapalok, and Janalok. And in this way, Srila Prabhupada in the purpose says that the frog philosophers, they still try to ascertain uh, in some imaginary explanation about the unlimited with their limited intelligence. Right? So once there was a, a disciple of Srila Prabhupada, he brought a painting and Srila Prabhupada said, what is this painting? So he said that Srila Prabhupada, you know, this is Krishna, he is, uh, you know, he is in distress. So there is a reference given in one of the conversations. Srila Prabhupada said, yes, Krishna is unlimited. So there was another uh, painter who had drawn based on his whimsical understanding that Krishna is like this and so and so. Srila Prabhupada, and he said, gave the reference that you said that Krishna is ananta, he is unlimited. The Lord uh, Srila Prabhupada smiled. He said, yes, Krishna is unlimited, but you are limited. So we should stay within our limited domain and not to sub try to surpass it. So because we are limited and we should follow the acharyas, the bona fide processes and not try to use our own you know, speculation. So there are two types of speculators, mental speculators, which are people who don't have the knowledge and are based on their different things that they are seeing happening in this world, they try to mentally, you know, man mano mein, you know mentally they try to speculate. Then another one is speculative philosophers. Speculative philosophers 
who read something but they don't understand the context and they just start to speculate based on their intelligence, based on the literal meaning and that's where Brahman Vadis, Chaitanya Mahaprabhu says the Maya Vadis, they are offenders at the lotus feet of Lord Sri Krishna because they fail to understand the context, they fail to surrender themselves because to be able to get admission for successful in our mission we have to seek submission at the lotus feet of a bona fide spiritual master. And who other than one who is not a human being, so this is matrimony is saying, can exist in this world and not be interested in the ultimate goal of life. So again, a person who wants to seek the ultimate goal of life, who is interested in meeting and achieving the ultimate goal of life, engages in devotional service. So this is a question posed by Maitreya Muni in a way of telling that only a foolish person will not take to this process. Only a person who is mad would not take to devotional service. So again, how can one refuse the nectar of narrations about the personality of Godhead's activities which by themselves can deliver one from all material pains? So again, here he is actually giving us the solution that when we hear the nectar of narrations about the personality of Godhead's activities, then we can be delivered from all material pangs. And there is a blessing in this chapter where it is Shmetamuni is saying that whoever hears, whoever engages in Shavanam Kirtanam of this pastime of the appearance of Lord Varahadev, because Lord Him he can appear in any form and is still transcendental, he's still glorious. So when one hears about this pastime with love, with affection, with devotion, with amazement, you know, like, wow, this is so wonderful in a positive mood. Then the Lord within the heart is pleased. And when the Lord is pleased, then we feel pleased because he is Rishikesha. He is the master of the senses. All our senses are satisfied. And this is where this particular chapter ends. And the last purport in this chapter is very beautiful. But I am getting an indication that... Uh, we should be looking if, uh, for discussion. So let's continue our discussion. Maybe in the next class, we'll just cover the last verse. The purport is so nectarian that we don't want to skip it. Yes, please go ahead with the purport. Okay. So here, the last verse has a very beautiful purport by Srila Prabhupada. Actually, all his purports are transcendental bliss. Right? I just, because of the time factor, we are only covering the last one. Here in the purpose, Srila Prabhupada is stating, The narration of the activities of the personality of Godhead is like a constant flow of nectar. So we are experiencing this constant flow of nectar through our ears when we are hearing the glories, his supreme pastimes. Read the translation. Yes. So again, what's the translation? The translation of text 50 is, who, other than one who is not a human being, can exist in this world and not be interested in the ultimate goal of life. So we read this earlier, yes. And who can refuse the nectar of narrations about the personality of Godhead's activities, which by themselves can deliver one from all material pangs. So again, Lord's, you know, when we hear about his activities, Lord can simply deliver one, us, from all material pangs because we liberate from the modes of material nature, we elevate above, we transcend the three modes of material nature on the absolute platform we, when we engage in hearing Lord's name, form, activities and pastimes. No one can refuse, so this is from the purport, to drink such nectar except one who is not a human being. So this is another place Srila Prabhupada is identifying that a person who is not interested and is refusing to hear the nectar of the transcendental activities of the Lordship, that person is not a human being. He, and there is a word given in the Shastra says, Dui Pada Pashu. So that person is an animal because he's engaged in animal like propensities, eat, sleep, mate, defend. That's what animals do. But as human beings, we have a higher purpose. And Atatu Brahma Jigyasa should be an inquiry what is the purpose of my life, of this human form of life? And how can I use this human form of life to transcend the three modes of material nature and to go back home where I would be eternally in bliss by engaging in devotional service? 
Devotion and service to the Lord is the highest goal of life for every human being. And such devotion and service begins by hearing about the transcendental activities of the personality of Godhead. That's why when we chant the Hare Krishna Maha Mantra, the stress is given on pronouncing it very nicely and attentively hearing it because the name enters through our ears into our heart and that's where the cleansing of our heart happens, Chetu Darpana Marjanam. And we can recognize our true self, Jivera Sarupoya Kishtera Ditya Das, that we are the eternal servant of Lord Shri Krishna and our only purpose of our existence is to please Lord Shri Krishna and then we will actually be pleased ourselves. So in all our senses, even the material senses, the gross senses will be fully satisfied and experience transcendental bliss. So only an animal or a man who is almost an animal in behavior can refuse to take an interest in hearing the transcendental message of the Lord. So here we are hearing that, you know, we, if we are seeking our benefit, then we should continue to engage in hearing the transcendental message of the Lord. There are many books of stories and histories in the world, but except for the histories or narrations on the topics of the personality of Godhead, none are capable of diminishing the burden of material pangs. So we discussed this earlier, that only when we engage in hearing, reading, writing, glorifying the name form activities, pastimes of Lord Shri Krishna, we will be in material nature, we will experience the relativity of this material world, but engagement in devotional service will situate us on the absolute platform at the lotus feet of Lord Shri Krishna, where we will experience the transcendental bliss, the nectar, the ocean of nectar. Therefore, one who is serious about eliminating material existence must chant and hear of the transcendental activities of the personality of Godhead. Directly here, the instruction is coming to us from Srila Prabhupada, Shamanam Ketanam Vishnu. So again, we should constantly hear and we should constantly chant the glories of the Supreme Personality of Godhead, Lord Shri Krishna. Otherwise, one must be compared to the non-humans. Otherwise, one should not even call himself a descendant of Manu. One should not call himself a Manushya or a Manav. Right? One should not consider himself as a human being because he is not much elevated than an animal. So strong words. So we should understand that every moment is an opportunity for us to make a choice for our ultimate benefit. And with that, we end this chapter. Hare Krishna, Gantra, Shivad Bhagavatam ki jai, Shila Prabhupad ki jai, Shila Bhagavat Pad ki jai, Anant Koti Vaishnav Vind ki jai, Nitai Go Prem Anande, Hari Hari Bol. Hare Krishna. Hare Krishna, dear viewers, Prabhuji, how much time do we have, we have for the questions? Minutes. We have five minutes. Okay, so Prabhuji can take few questions. Uh, Hare Krishna, Karuna Sindhu Prabhuji. Karuna Sindhu Prabhuji कहते हैं, Thank you Prabhuji for this beautiful discourse. और उनका एक question है. Prabhuji, one question, how can we inspire our family for hearing and chanting with us when they have no interest and they are lost in TV watching, gossiping or materialistic activities too much? So Prabhuji, ये scenario है आजकल का और please give us some insight in brief. So it helps all of us. Hare Krishna, Kavanasindu Prabhu. Yes, this is a very common question and very important question. One minute, let me put on microphone. Repeat. Kavanasindu Prabhu has a very important question which is many uh, folks, they experience in their life that they are engaged in devotional service. They are attracted to hear the name, form, activities, pastimes of Lord Shri Krishna. But the family members are not so much interested. Right? And the family members are engaged in video games, TVs, and all kind of gossip. So how can we encourage them to take to devotional service? So this is a very important question. And Acharyas give a very simple response. That our senses are too dull to experience Lord Shri Krishna. But when we engage our tongue in eating the prasadam, right? So you know, when we engage our tongue in service so that is by chanting but also by prasadam so we should offer 
nice bhogas offerings to the lost ship then it becomes prasad prasad also means mercy and then offer them this prasad we should pray for them so there are some techniques i'm discussing first is offer prasadam krishna prasadam to our family members in a very happy in a jubilant mood we should not try to discourage them we should show them how wonderful this experience is in krishna consciousness right and we should pray for them and we should try to engage them agya sukriti is also very important so indirectly to serve lord shri krishna sometimes you know we should ask them to go to the market and get vegetables and different kind of you know ingredients that we'll be using in our cooking we can very well ask them to get some clothes so that we can nicely stitch proper dresses for the lost ship we should ask them to please clean the area you know so that you know they get this mercy we can place lot pictures around the house so that unknowingly also they get the mercy of the lord when they look at the beautiful form of lord hopefully this response is good hari krishna this satisfies your question hari hari krishna karuna sindhu prabhu ji so prabhu ji ne aapko tips batayi hain please try them out and let us know geeta desha mata ji ne bhi aaj join kiya hai welcome so uh, dear viewers we would like to end the session here thank you for joining us in the shrimad bhagavatam class today गंधरा